Hi, I'm Patrick the Free Will Baptist, and uh, I just want to make a short video on um, some serious false teachings on the mark of the beast. Now, I'm not talking about damnable teaching or anything like that. I'm not trying to condemn anybody for anything. And this isn't some kind of an attack against Scott Johnson. This is just that I will not agree with people on this issue. And I, and I will show you why exactly with the Word of God. And if you choose not to believe it, that's your business. Than the economy of the last days. But the true purpose of forcing all mankind to take the mark is that by taking it, each person is declaring that they recognize the Antichrist as God and they will worship him. And I guarantee you that from a technological standpoint and from a spiritual standpoint, you're going to... From a technological standpoint, there's going to be a lot of mind control involved with the mark of the beast, with whatever technology is built into it. But there's also going to be a huge demonic uh, a component, which, again, is, is just like, it's like having your conscience sealed with a hot iron. It's like you want, you want to be on the point of no return. You, you're, if you take the mark of the beast, that's it. You're going to the lake of fire eventually. Same. There's no turning back. There's no none of this stuff like John MacArthur's teaching and a lot of other preachers now are teaching that you take the mark of the beast and, and it's okay as long as you really didn't mean it and you're sincere and you're still a Christian, you'll still go to heaven. No, you won't. You're going to go to the lake of fire. You're going to go to hell. For taking the mark first, of the beast. First and then the lake of fire later with the great white throne judgment. Okay? I love you enough to tell you the truth. They don't because they're hirelings that have no true love for the sheep and their evidence is by what, you know, their actions and what they speak. So, their actions are in that they teach for money. So it's hard to say that they actually serve the Lord Jesus Christ when they take pay for teaching. That goes for anybody. Yeah, that John MacArthur's been. He's just one of many. The, the whole Left Behind series teaches that, which is another brainwashing tool. So, <clears throat> um, like Tim LaHaye, you know, I, I'm pretty sure he's Left Behind. Anyway, so. Yeah, you don't ever, ever, ever take the mark of the beast. And if you have to be martyred for it, absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Okay? So I'm just saying, uh, let's go further here. Uh, Therefore God warns of an unspeakable judgment for anyone and everyone who takes the mark. Listen and be warned. And the third angel follow them, saying with a lot... So, the whole world right now wants you to think that you're damned for just taking the mark of the beast. This is a serious error in what the truth is. Now, the problem with a lot of teachers is they want you to teach, they want to teach you with your Bible shut. Now look, I encourage you, open your Bible, the King James. If, if, you, read a, a, if you read a perverted Bible, you're going to get perverted doctrine. And don't just listen to me. I'm, I'm, I mess up when I read sometimes. I'm not perfect. Open and study your Bible so that the Word of God can speak to your heart and convict you of the truth. Revelation chapter number 3, or thir Revelation chapter number 13, verse number 2. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were like a feet of, the bear, of a bear, and his mouth the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and his great authority. So apparently the dragon, who is Satan, has given this beast his power and seat and great authority. Now I want you to pay close attention to what this context is. Who has such great authority right now? And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. And they that worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. Who's the dragon? And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast, who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God, and to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle, and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints, and to overcome them. And power was given unto him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. Talking about the first beast. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man hath an ear, let him hear. And then you can go on down, and then later, you know, 
And you can go on and read about the second beast exercising all the power of the first beast, doing great wonders and deceiving them that dwell on the earth by all his miracles and power that he had to do. And he said, he said to all them that dwell on the earth, they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. So then there's an image of a beast that lives and speaks and all that. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, and the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the beast should be killed. Where have we read that you will be killed for not taking the mark of the beast? We haven't. The thing of it is, this is a big serious problem with men. They teach that you're just to look for the mark of the beast, and as long as you escape that, you're good to go. Well, the Bible clearly teaches that if you're saved, you won't be worshiping the beast, and you won't be taking his mark either. Go on and read down, and he causeth all, the beast, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead, that no man might buy or sell, save he had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. So you didn't have to just have the mark of the beast here to have actually been marked by the beast. The people that that they just go on, don't, don't take the mark of the beast. Well, look, there's another way around this. You can use the name of the beast or the number of his name. So, people that worship the beast are already technically marked because they're using the name of him or the number of his name. So there's the question, guys. How is it that a person doesn't worship the beast? Because the only ones that will not be worshiping the beast are those that are saved by the Lamb of God. There is no, you, uh, you have to watch out and you do this or you're damned. No. This is about you have to continue in the gospel of sound doctrine and during the faith unto the end. <clears throat> and you can go on about the wisdom, about having, having an understanding the number of his name and being 666. But, uh, the thing of it is, you need to be paying attention to what beast this is, and you need to make sure that your worship is pure and not defiled in worshiping other gods. That's a serious problem in error that just about... That's a serious problem that a lot of people are running around with right now is they think they're looking for... Look, making sure that they don't take the very chip and go to hell. The whole problem is, is the beast and worshiping the beast's image. And this is why I teach that pledging allegiance to the flag is completely wrong. So what great authority is over this land right now? And do you believe it's of God? And I mean of the Bible. That, that, that the God of the Bible actually proves of the government that we have over top of us right now. And we have so many people that claim the blood of Jesus, but yet yeah, they pledge allegiance to the most wicked government that has ever been. That is over in other countries, murdering innocent people, not to mention all the babies that are being murdered over here under the guise of legal abortion, which is baby butchering. Uh, it's, it's just beyond me. But, guys, to be honest with you, there's things that baffle the far out of me because in my local town, the uh, public school system's mascot is a blue devil, and so many people that I know that claim to be Christians, I have seen wearing shirts that say, Go Devils, and things like that on them. And uh, people just do all this unscriptural worship that is not dictated in the Bible, and then they turn around and swear up and down how the God of the Old Testament is the God of today. But I remember that the God of the Old Testament, he demands worship only one way, and he'll receive it only one way. So if you're not engaged in biblical worship in spirit and truth, exactly what are you doing? Thank you for watching my video, and also I want to note on here that I'm not against Scott Johnson. I think he's a pretty decent teacher and all from what little I've listened to of him, but this is not my endorsement of him either. I only was listening to him today, and I just I get so sick and tired of hearing people say how, don't take the mark or you're damned. That's crazy because that's not what the Bible said. And I real and I and I do realize that in Revelation 14 and, and verse 9, that there was an angel that said with a loud voice, "If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead, not his hand." The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. 
But the thing of it is, why would you take the mark of the beast unless you're a worshiping the beast to begin with? Because if you believe God's word, the Bible, <laughs> you won't want nothing to do with the beast. You'll hate it. So, guys, I seriously, seriously, seriously encourage you to do prayer, to do careful and prayerful study. Search your heart and search out for God and find out the truth of this. It's not about just watching for a mark. This war that we're fighting, it's spiritual, not physical. So, a physical mark that you would take is, is, not, is not the malfunction. The malfunction is, is your heart and what you worship. So, anyway, I appreciate your time. And like I said, this, this video isn't me down in Scott Johnson or anybody else in regards to this teaching. I, I was just using him as an example because there are many that just teach that. And, uh, you know, and I don't, I don't endorse him either because I haven't listened to him nearly long enough. But anyway, appreciate your time watching my video. And praise the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.